Moza Racing versus Sim Magic. A genuine question that a lot of sim racers have had on their mind. Well, I've had the privilege to really test out both of these products and really give an honest, thorough review of what I think between the two. So, in this video, we're going to go over pricing, really how the two wheelbases compare, and which one you should buy. So, let's get started by going over some pricing. So if you are a normal human being, you will understand that pricing has a lot to do with the decisions we make in, in life, I guess. So when you're choosing between Simmatic versus Moza, you got to take price into consideration as well as the quality and the type of product it really is. So let's just take a look here. On the Simmatic side, we're going to be comparing all the high-end stuff to Moza's high-end stuff. So. The Alpha U, which is the 23 newton meter wheelbase that I've been using, comes in at $1,029. The Q1, which is the sequential shifter with the four buttons on it, that comes in at $379. The TBRS, it's a hydraulic handbrake, that comes in at $369. And the P1000 pedals come in at about $550. And a total of $2,327, not including tax and shipping, for a whole cinematic setup. Now, on the Moza side, we get the R21 for $9.99, um, the SGP shifter, which is their sequential, um, it has two buttons on it, um, HBP handbrake, $99, comparatively to the Simagic one, this one is a spring one, so it comes with a spring, you can put one in, or you can put a stiffer spring in, um, overall the feel of it, it's quite numb, and the CRP pedals, me honest here, uh, don't hate me, um, if you have these pedals, I'm sorry, they're kind of similar design to the Fanatec Club Sport V3s. I've used the V3s before and I've actually enjoyed them um, a little bit. I know they got their issues, they break sometimes. The CRPs never broke. The clutch feeling is really not the best. Um, when it comes to like, I like to have like, you know, that 90 to 100% um, throttle input. I like there to be it to be pretty sensitive there because I like to go you know, in between that just to max out the wheel speed, right? Especially when I'm drifting, these do not do that. Um, the clutch does not feel great. And the brakes also do not feel great. They just feel like rocks that you're just pushing into. Um, clutch really doesn't have any sort of bite point. Even with the lightest spring on the P1000s, I have a bite point, which is fantastic. I um, never thought I would have that on not the top of range pedal set. Because to be honest here, the P2000s, which is like $300 more than the P1000s, those are the top range Simagic ones. I got the P1000s because I've heard from FD drivers and all those good people that the P1000s feel more like a race car. And I'm like, well, let's run it that way, you know? Um, and I've been loving them. I love the throttle pedal on the P1000. It's very, you know, modular. You can modulate between that 85 to 100% range. Clutch feels amazing. You could just kick it and there's a nice clutch point and the brakes are actually phenomenal. You're looking at the board. The Moza setup is $700 less than the Simagic setup. So you really gotta think, why is it so much cheaper? Well, in my opinion, after using Moda, Moza products for a year and a half, over a year and a half, right? Moza makes a product more for the casual sim racer, right? So. For 85% of people that buy a sim racing rig, they're gonna use it maybe like once a week, once a month, you know, they throw it up, they use it. That's why the R5, their lowest end, one of their lowest ends, their five newton meter wheel sells so well because the entry point is so cheap and it's more for the casual person. Um, that's also why their highest tier shifter and e-brake is also super cheap because it's for, again, the average person, right? If you're not really into cars and you just see this sim thing and you want to take a try at it, you're probably going to buy Moza because the barrier to entry is so low, right? And because that barrier to entry is so low and it's built for a consumer product, the quality and overall experience for it is going to be that of an average consumer product. The R21, even though it has 21 newton meters of force, the biggest issue with it is it has a very bad oscillation problem. So. When you're driving straight down the road, you let go of the wheel, especially in a lower newton meter setting, such as drifting. Like if you're in an F1 car, sure, if you let go and you're on like F123 and you let go, it's gonna like 
oscillate. And as you're going down and it goes like this, right? It goes like that. So when you're drifting, it does the same thing and it gets really bad. It will turn like this much, right? 90 degrees, more than 90 degrees when going down the road, almost going to like this sort of angle too. Sim Magic, 30 bucks more, it does not do that. And because of that oscillation problem on the R21, I specifically had to turn down the detail and the force feedback on the R21 so I could get, you know, self steer out of it. But I had to turn down that detail because when I'd go over curbs and I'd be drifting, it would bump and it'd catch the wheel and it'd rip it out of my hand no matter what, right? No matter how hard I gripped it, it would like oscillate and feel through the hand. Um, so the R21 just doesn't give that detail. Like if it's a bump, even if I set the car up right, I, I understand some cars, you know, they're set up that way, it rips it out of your hand, but with a perfect car setup to go over bumps, the R21 still does that, right? If we look at the shifters, right, the Q1 is $250 more. The Q1 is a lot better shifter. This is all dainty. The SGP is a very dainty shifter, again, for the average consumer. When you shift with it, sure, it makes a click noise, but it seems kind of artificial and it's not real. The Q1, it's like an actual heavy metal clunk, right? It's a mechanical clunk, not like a click sort of noise that the SGP makes. The TBRS, man, compared to the HBP handbrake, there's no shot, like, the HBP gets nowhere close to the TBRS. Again, because it's hydraulic. It feels like an actual drift car that you're in, right? When you pull the handbrake. Um, P1000s, like, I think these are the best mid-range pedals. Like, after trying out the Club Sport V3s, the CRPs, I haven't really tried any Husingfelds. Um, I've tried Ultimates, but no, like, Sprints or anything like that. After just trying those three pedals, these outrank these. Even though they're $150 more, I feel like that $150 is a lot more worth it, especially if you're trying to get the best experience. There is a $700 difference, but it's $700. I'd say it's more than $700 worth of quality. You're sacrificing when you go with Moza rather than Sim Magic, even though you're just trying to save a couple bucks, right? My opinion, if you're even remotely into cars and you like cars, I would go Sim Magic all day just because the representation of how it is to a real life product is a lot better than Moza. Moza still makes a decent product, right? Especially for the average consumer. If I don't, you know, if I'm not really into race cars, I'm just fucking around on a Seto or Car X or whatever, I'll buy a Moza, you know? But if I wanna replicate the real life feeling of a race car, I'm gonna go with the Sim Magic over the Moza every single day of the week. So even from a pricing perspective, Sim Magic still goes over Moza. But again, if budget's like your biggest thing, you know, finances, oh, I can't tell myself I could shell out 2,400 bucks for Sim Magic setup and you wanna go Moza, I would try to mismatch some things, right? So if you're any normal person, I would go Alpha U over R21 and every day of the week, just because that oscillation problem, um, Q1, Depends on really what you do. If you're a drifter, I would go for this and spend on this rather than um, buying both. And then if you're more for racing, I would buy the Q1 over the SGP um, and then take the HPP over the TBRS just because my focus isn't going to be drifting. Um, but yeah, I would take the P1000s all day, every day of the week. Um, they're just way better than the CRPs even after you know a couple days driving. It's just a lot better of an experience. I could feel my throttle more. Fantastic clutch. I won't put a stiffer spring in it. I think it'll be a lot better, but yeah. Um, if you, yeah, if you have a financial problem, I wouldn't just go with the Moza. I would go Sim Magic. I would definitely get this. Like if you have to spend money, buy the Alpha U. It's 30 more dollars and it's like 50 times better. So hope that helps you out. Now let's get back to some driving and some more commentary stuff. The Moza setup. I have used Moza products for a year and a half, and as many as you know, I used to be a sponsored creator by them. I am no longer a sponsored creator by them. However, I do have a lot of things to say about the brand in general. First things first, 
Moza is killing it with their advertising game. As you can see, they're all over micro centers. You've probably seen them on Instagram or YouTube advertising. Genuinely, Moza Racing has their advertising game on lock. That's how so many people are able to buy it. And they advertise towards the average consumer. Me, I am obsessive, maybe a little too obsessive, with drifting and motorsports. So when I want a product by a sim racing brand, I want the best of the best, something to imitate a real life race car. Because overall, that's why I use the sim rig, is to imitate real life on the simulator. So over the past year and a half, as I've been using these Moza products, I've really realized that these are more towards the average consumer. They're not gauged towards the car enthusiast, perchance. If you want to buy a Moza, you're really more so just casual. You're like, hey, I think this sim racing thing is cool. I'm not super into cars, but I have a few hundred bucks to spare. Let me go buy it. I think their R5 bundle is really well priced and is great for that consumer. 500 or 600 bucks for pedals, a wheel, and a wheelbase. I think that is fantastic and getting that direct drive sensation. However, if you're like me who does esports competitively and is one of the best sim drifters in the world, getting fourth in VDC this past season on Moza equipment, I can confidently tell you if I were on different equipment, I could probably do better because I feel it very much limited my abilities. First things first, the peripherals, aka the handbrake and the shifter, sure, they are there and they work, and they are quite reliable when they work. However, they don't give me the sensation and the feeling that I want when I am drifting. The handbrake isn't hydraulic or load cell, it's just a spring, and the only changes you can make is the positioning, or you can put a stiffer spring in it. Now, the shifter, the sequential shifter, it was good. However, at times, I would miss shift and it'd be a mystery gear. So I'd shift up and it would not shift up or I'd shift down and it would not shift down, which I was always scared in competition that that would happen to me. However, thankfully, it never did. So when it comes to the peripherals of things, yes, the Moza stuff is reliable and it works and it's very cheap. But if you want that one to one implication from real life to sim, sim magic wins all day. Next up, we're going to talk about the pedals. So, Sim Magic's top line pedals is the P2000s. I have the P1000s, which are still fantastic pedals. They come in at around 550 bucks. But I also had the Moza Racing SRPs and the CRPs. The SRPs coming in at about 200 bucks with a load cell. They were like the mid-range pedals, and then the CRPs being their high end at 400 bucks. Now I want to compare the CRP and the P1000s. The CRPs were okay at best. I feel the Fanatec Club Sport V3s are better than the CRPs and the V3s are $50 cheaper. I feel the CRPs are very much trying to accomplish that high-end feel, but Moza is missing out on a, quite a few key things. Number one being the brake pedal. The brake pedal, no matter how stiff or how soft you make it, is a very numb feeling brake pedal. When you push into it, it's either very stiff or it's very soft, no real in-betweens. Um, the throttle pedal isn't the best as well. After a few weeks of using it, the 100% to 80% range doesn't really exist. So when you push down, it goes from 80 to 100%. That sort of range of trying to have throttle modulation is pretty much impossible because it stays at 100 or goes down to 80. The other thing is the clutch. It's just a clutch. It doesn't really have a bite point. You push in. In the stock form, it is stiffer than the P1000s. But when we go to the P1000s, they are a lot better. That throttle pedal is fantastic. And from that 100 to 80% range, you're able to modulate it very well. The brake feels very good. And you can adjust it using their elastomers, which is super easy. And I currently have it in between like a touring car setup and a street pad setup. And it feels phenomenal. And their clutch out the bat is a little bit light. However, you could put a stiffer spring in it, which feels a lot more realistic. So even though the P1000s are more expensive, if you are trying to get that realistic one-to-one -one feel, P1000s win all day. The Alpha U versus the R21. Now, these two are basically competitors of each other. The Alpha U spits out 23 newton meters of torque. The Moza spits out 21 newton meters of torque. However, the Moza is only 999, while the Alpha U is about 1,029 to 1,049, depending on the retailer. 
Very similar prices, very similar newton meter outputs, but what's the real difference? Well, <sighs> here's where things get really sour, unfortunately. The Moza R21, for the months, almost year that I've used it, I've had a constant problem with it oscillating. Essentially, when you take your hands off the wheel, it wobbles back and forth almost to 180 degrees. And when you're trying to drift, that is a huge issue, especially when you're in transition, especially when you're going over curbs. It sucks. And no matter what I did and tried to do, it would fuck up. So that being said, the R21, I thought was a great budget base, right? However, seeing that the Alpha U is only 30 to $50 more than the R21, I really wanted to put it up to the test, you know? Is it good still? And might I say, it is miles better. Now, I'm not just saying that, and this is not biased at all. The Alpha U, if you line them up directly, it has no oscillation problems. I could turn up the torque on it without having crazy oscillation or it just not being able to transition and drift because it just like folds over itself and it feels like garbage. It is smooth. It is predictable and you get sensations. When I'm drifting, I go over curbs. I could feel it through the wheel, just like a real car. And if I tried that on the Moza, the setting I was at before I switched over, it was so numb in order for me to have good self-steer because I feel that's the most important part when drifting that I couldn't feel over bumps. And with the Sim Magic, I have good self-steer and I could feel over bumps and I don't have the oscillation problem. So when it comes to wheelbase to wheelbase, if there's one thing that you should buy from the Sim Magic line, it's 100% going to be the Alpha U wheelbase if you're comparing it to the R21. Shelling out an extra $100 with taxes and shipping for the Alpha U compared to the R21 is far more worth it because that wheelbase will give you such a better representation of a real car and experience that, in my opinion, it's well worth everything. So my final thoughts. The CEO of Extreme Sim Racing, which is where I got all this Sim Magic gear from, told me to be as honest as possible. So I am going to be as honest as possible here. The Alpha U wheelbase is a fantastic wheelbase and in my opinion is one of the best wheelbases bang for your buck on the market from what I have tried. The P1000s, also fantastic pedals, a great mid-range pedal set, highly recommend. The TBRS, it is slightly overkill for the average drifter, right? I don't think you need it. The TB1 will do the job perfectly fine. However, if you're like me and you're kind of obsessed with drifting, it is well worth the investment, right? The Q1, again, slightly overkill, but if you're trying to have that just real life sensation and you want a nice shifter, this is probably one of the nicest shifter on the market before you get to the $500 plus shifters where you know they have custom parts inside of it and they're really hard to get and they could go all the way up to $2,000 for the ultra realistic like eight shifters and sequentials. So I think Sim Magic is very much ruling that market where it's in between that mid-range and stupid expensive pricing. So when comparing Moza to Sim Magic, Moza is great for that average consumer who doesn't want to drop an extra $700 on the ultimate set as I said. However, the experience I have gotten with just a few days on the Sim Magic is way better than any time of the year I spent with the Moza. Absolutely, 100%, undoubtedly, I would go Sim Magic over Moza products. And again, this is from the CEO of Extreme Sim Racing who told me to be honest about the Sim Magic products. That is my true opinion. If you are in that sort of quote-unquote budget range of high-end sim racing equipment, I would go Sim Magic all day, no questions asked. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this answered all your questions in regards to Sim Magic versus Moza. If you do have any more questions, leave them down below, but I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.